Have you ever dealt with an insecure person? I mean, you know, you deal with this person, you go, okay, so what's the problem? Why are we having an issue? And you can't quite figure it out. Well, that's what happens in the life of uh, the nation of Israel in the book of Exodus. They come to a place where all of a sudden things have changed. Their Joseph, their hero, the guy who brought them to Egypt is now dead. He's lived 110 years and now the world has totally changed and listen to what the Bible says happened. First, it warned them earlier that there would be a guy who rose who knew not Joseph. You remember that part of the story. But let me show you Exodus chapter 1, verse 9. It says this, And he said to his people, Look, the people of the children of Israel are more and mightier than we. Come, let us deal shrewdly with them. At least they multiply and it happen in the event of war that they join with our enemies and fight against us. And so go up out of the land. Therefore they set taskmasters over them to afflict them with burdens. And they built for Pharaoh supply cities, Python, Ramesses. But the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew, and they were in dread of the children of Israel. So the Egyptians made the children of Israel, look at that, serve with rigor, and they made their lives bitter with hard bondage and mortar and brick and all manner of service in the field. All their service in which they made them serve was with rigor. Wow, what a mess. Here's a guy who, for reasons no one can explain, decides that the children of Israel are a threat. So what does he do? <laughs> he starts beating them up, puts taskmasters over them, slaves them, does something that was never done before. Now, we shared with you earlier that there was this verse that said there was a guy uh, named Joseph who had saved Egypt years ago. And so he was their hero, but now he was dead. And all your heroes eventually leave you. One more time. All your heroes eventually leave you. And if you stay around too long and you don't make decisions, you can end up enslaving yourself in the future. You know, retiring from the job when it's time, leaving when it's time. You see the handwriting on the wall. You know it's time. You know that you don't no longer love what you're doing. Whatever the reason, these folks could not leave Egypt. They'd gotten implanted there. They were now in the multiple millions. And so now the world is troubled because there arose somebody who didn't know. And so what does he do? He enslaved them. And so now their lives are hard. Are you in that kind of situation where you... Um, are dealing with somebody who's intimidated because of you, who has insecurity issues that you can't resolve, but they are making your life hard. What do you do? Well, first of all, understand that sometimes you can't do anything right now. They couldn't. They couldn't leave. They were in a place where they couldn't leave. Sometimes your circumstances don't allow you to leave. Americans really don't understand that. They don't understand what it means to not be able to get a visa, to not be able to take a trip, to not be able to go someplace. Sometimes you're in a position in life where you can't leave today, right now. So what do you do? You trust God and you work your way through it. Some things you live through, some things you don't just walk out of. Sometimes you're in a circumstance which, that you have to stay in. Now, I don't want you to stay in anything in America. Or if you can get out of the, an abusive situation, I'm not encouraging you to stay. What I'm saying, though, is there are some times you can't quit that job right now. There are times you cannot leave right now. There are times you have to stay in that house. You can't move to another neighborhood. There are ways in which your life can turn that sometimes leave you with very few options. But what's interesting is Israel is in this place, but God has got a Moses coming. Somebody's coming, a way is coming, a door is going to be open for you, an opportunity is going to come to help you get out of this season. But the lesson in this season is, is crucial. This is the danger of overstaying. And this is the danger of having to deal with people that are insecure. It shows you what insecure people can do to you. They can put you in bad places. They can make you angry. They can enslave you. And that's his insecurity. This is based on zero. They had no evidence that these people would turn on them. But they were afraid, and so they began to spread these rumors, you know, all these conspiracy theories that somebody's out to get you, the boogeyman's coming. Sometimes, you know, you need to be careful about spreading rumors and ideas and things that you think without any basis. In this case, it literally enslaved an entire people. And if you're not careful, you can be guilty of the same. And so let me pray for you. Father, I pray for those who are being victimized by insecure people. I pray for those who are who are victimizing others because of their insecurity. They have no basis to judge that mother-in-law, daughter-in-law the way they are. May they learn to love them and give them an opportunity, whoever it is in their life, 
that may be God making them feel insecure. May they learn from this story and not spread that kind of bondage. In your name we pray. Amen. Hey, listen, it's fun to be with you today. I hope it helped you a little bit. You be blessed. I'll see you next time right here and hopefully sharpen you next time a little bit with the Bible. See you next time. Bye-bye.